In this video, we're gonna begin coding out our home page. Before we jump in and start coding things, I wanna go back to what we worked on in the config.yaml file and explain a couple things to you real quick. So we're gonna come over here and open the project. All right, open config.yaml. And over here where we put the base URL, the reason uh, the base URL is Zachary R. Newton is because we're hosting the site on GitHub and my Git repository is named Zachary R. Newton. So the base URL is going to be forward slash whatever your repository is that you're going to be using on your site. And then the URL down here, it's whatever um, domain name that you are going to be using for your site, that'll just go in here. So what we're going to be doing in this video is uh, coding out the home page. So if you come over here, we can look at the design that we've got going. This is the home page right now. I'm not sure how much of this we're going to be able to get done all in one sitting. Right now I just kind of want to focus on getting some of the structure set up with uh, layouts and um, we're going to primarily work on these two sections right here. As long as we can get, as long as we can get this done I'll be happy. So let's come over to the project in Adam and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a default layout for our HTML pages so I'm gonna come up here create a new folder call it underscore layouts and then in here we're gonna make a new file and we're gonna name it uh, default.html so default dot HTML. Alright, now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start adding just a, some basic HTML structure to this. Um, that way we don't have to write this out on every single page that we create. So we're going to start by declaring the doc type. And we need HTML. Oops. So right here, we know that all the content that we're going to be adding to any of the other pages is going to have to go inside of the body tag. So we're just going to write uh, curly brace, curly brace, and content. And then it's just going to be the two closing curly braces you see there. Now we can go ahead and save that. And that's going to be it for our default layout at the moment. Right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a couple of includes so that we can include them in our default layout and not have to keep rewriting them. I'm going to create a new folder called underscore includes. And then in there, we are going to create a file called head.html. And inside of head.html, we're going to add um, our meta tags and the title of the website. So it's all in one place. We'd, it's not cluttering up our workspace in other areas. Okay, so right here in the uh, description area in content, if you remember back in our config.yaml, we wrote this little description here. 
well, instead of copying and pasting that, we're going to use this variable that we made right here inside of content, and we're going to write uh, curly brace, curly brace, site dot description, and that is going to um, input whatever we have written out here anywhere we use this little bit of code. So same thing here, just like in the config.yaml, we have our title. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to use the variable the same way we just did here. Um, but this time it's going to be curly brace, curly brace, site dot title. And right there, that's going to be our title. Okay, so right now what we're about to do is we're about to set the path to the favicon, which we will be adding in just a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the curly brace, curly brace, site dot base URL variable, and then we're going to go forward slash favicon.ico because that's what we're going to be naming it. Right now we're just adding the uh, style sheet. And again we're going to write the path starting with site.base url so curly brace curly brace site dot base URL forward slash and we're going to be putting it inside of assets CSS and then we're going to name the file style.css okay so that's going to be it right this second um, what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to add a little bit of um, hierarchy in our folders over here. So we currently don't have an assets folder, but we're going to need to make one for this link to work. So we're just going to make a new folder, call it assets. And because we aren't putting an underscore in front of it, um, Jekyll is not going to parse all of the information in there and rewrite it anywhere. It's just going to copy everything that's in the assets folder as is and place it in the site folder that it will generate um, a little later. I mean, you see right here, this is the site folder. So it's just going to copy this and it's going to stick it right there. Inside of our assets folder, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make another folder and name it CSS and then we're also going to make another folder inside of our assets folder called images I'm just going to call it IMG and we can make one more folder and we're going to just name it uh, JS Okay, so I've got a couple images right here that we're going to be using. The one image is this uh, background for the hero image, and the other image is just the avatar. So I'm going to put them inside of assets and images. Just drag and drop. Okay, that's pretty good for now. Inside of our JS folder, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a JavaScript file for now. It's going to be what we're going to be writing all of our uh, own functions in. So I'm just going to right click, hit new file, and I'm just going to call it functions.js. 
that's good enough for right now we don't need anything more and then in our CSS folder we're just gonna make a file and call it styles.css I'm pretty sure we named it styles over here we so we'll just change this, styles.css. Okay. So, right now we have our uh, meta information for our head, and we are in, we're gonna import that right here in this head. So we're gonna do um, it's going to be curly brace percent sign include head dot html percent sign and end curly brace it's a little different because it's an include it's not a uh, it's not like a variable or anything anywhere so this is how we're gonna have to write this to pull that in so if you want to go ahead and open up your terminal real quick, we'll see what's working and what's not working. So I'm going to change directories into my desktop. Um, you'll see the folder right there. So when I go into that folder, CD Zachary R Newton, and then we're going to run bundle exec jekyll serve with the two flags we used last time it's going to be watch and base url space two quotation marks and run that okay so the server is running right here we're going to copy this address, open up Chrome, and let's go to it. It still says hello world, so that's good. Let's, uh, on a Mac, hit option command U, and we're just going to look at the code right here. As you can see, the only thing right here is just the tag we wrote uh h1 and hello world nothing else that we've been putting in here is coming up and that's because we've added it all to this layout but we haven't told our index uh dot html to use the default layout so we're gonna come up here and we're gonna write a little bit of liquid code and we're gonna start it off with um three dashes come down I'm gonna go layout default and end it with three more dashes and save that make sure everything regenerates it says uh, error favicon ICO not found that's okay that's just because we haven't added the that file yet but let's come back over here and refresh and now you'll see all of our code that we've been adding so far is here we have the doc type the HTML the head with all of our metadata in here and we also have uh, our body and h1 is now inside of the body tag because in our layout we told it to put the content inside the body tag so right now before we move on what we're gonna do is we're going to add um, we're gonna make another include that contains our JavaScript link uh, well our JavaScript files and the path to them so we're going to come up to includes and we're going to make a new file and let's just call them um, JS link dot HTML. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and come to our browser. We're going to go to jQuery and we're just going to go ahead and download the, um, and we're going to download the latest version of jQuery. So 
So we're going to download the uh, compressed version right here. It's going to our downloads. All right. And we're going to just drop this inside of our JS folder. And back in our JS links, we're just going to go ahead and add a script tag. And source, whoops. So again, to link these, we're going to start it with curly brace, curly brace, site dot base URL forward slash assets forward slash JS. And the first thing we're going to include is the uh, jQuery. So that is forward slash jQuery dash 3.2.0 dot min dot js and we're gonna end the script tag and now we're just gonna copy and paste that and we're going to change the file name to functions dot js save it and now we're going to need to uh, pull our JS link include into our default.html layout. So we're just going to do it down here at the bottom of our content in the body. And what we're going to write is the same thing we have up top here. So you want to just copy paste it. But this is going to say JS link. Save that. We're going to come back over to our browser, refresh this, and you'll see these have popped up in the bottom. Let's go ahead and click on jQuery and make sure the link, the path works. So as you can see right here is the entire jQuery file. So, so far everything is good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our SAS folder and its hierarchy right now. So we're going to need to make a new folder underscore SAS. And in that SAS folder, we're going to make uh, three more folders. We're going to make one uh, zero dash base. We're going to make another one one dash modules and the last one we're going to make is so that's a file we need another folder it's going to be two dash layouts now this this has nothing to do with jekyll this is just how i like to set up my hierarchy um so i can organize my sass as i'm writing it um Basically, any global um, CS, well, SAS that we'll be writing is going to go in our base. Um, any SAS that applies to a large section of the website, but not the entire website, is going to go in our layouts. And any of our small sections, so whether it be like the navigation or the footer, um, those will go in modules and they will have their own files. So right now in our SAS, um, we're going to go ahead and make a new file and we're going to call it, uh, main dot SAS. And then we're going to come over here into our base, make a file. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to go ahead and name it um, dir-base.sass. So 
I'm naming it this because it's going to be the directory for that folder. So any files we have within this folder, we're going to include with um, or import with this file right here. So now we're going to come over here to our modules and make another file. And we're going to name it dir dash modules dot sass. And then our layouts, we're going to do the same thing. dir dash layouts dot sass. And now we're going to go ahead and import them um, using the main SAS file that we put in our SAS directory here. So to do that, you're going to write at import space uh, quotes. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just write the path to it. So we're going to do the uh, base directory first, and that's going to be 0 dash base forward slash and then you're going to write dir dash base and you're not going to put the uh, extension uh, so it's just uh, zero dash base forward slash dir dash base and that's it we don't need dot sass so we are going to do the next one over here this is one dash modules and then it's going to be directory dash modules and then one more this is going to be two dash layouts forward slash dir um, dash layouts and save that see if we've got any other errors it doesn't look like it so now what we're going to do we're going to want all of the SAS that we write to end up going into our style.css so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a little bit of liquid code at the top of this. So we're going to do dash 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 and then we're going to write dash 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 just so it knows that it needs to parse the information in it. And then we're going to write um, at import and then we're just going to write um, main because uh, our SAS is looking at this directory already so we don't need to write that path and we're going to be importing everything from our main.sass and because it's sass we don't need to add the extension so we're just going to go ahead and save that see if it gave us any errors no errors whatsoever here Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and actually start working on this little bit right here. So in our index.html, we're going to get rid of our hello world and we are going to put header. Um, we're going to add a class um, header dash main and we can come down here close our header and inside of our header we are going to add a um overlay so we're just going to name a div with a class of overlay light And the reason we're doing this is because um, the header is going to contain the image you see back there. And then that div is essentially going to be this overlay. 
So we're also going to go ahead and add a um, div that's going to contain this little bit right here. So I'm just going to say div class home dash title um, and in here what we're going to add is an h1 and we're going to add an h3 inside of this h1 we're going to add um, our site title because it's the same thing written right here. So to do that, we're just going to do curly brace, curly brace, site dot title. And then down here, we're going to add designer slash developer. So right now, let's see if that showed up in a website. And you see it right here. That has popped up. So another thing we're going to do um, outside of our title is we're going to add the avatar image. But it's going to be a link uh, down to the blurb. So if anyone accidentally clicks it or purposely clicks it thinking that something's going to happen, it will just take them and scroll them just down to right here so they can read this section. So to do that, we're going to make an a href equals. And I know for a fact that we're going to give that section an ID of blurb. So I'm just going to write hashtag blurb. And then we can go ahead and give it a class of home dash avatar and close the div off. So what we're going to do is we're going to start styling this a little bit with our sass. So let's come over here and um, because the home page <clears throat> is fairly simple. Um, we're just going to go ahead and keep all of our um, styles for it in one layout um, SAS file. So we're going to come here and we're going to make a new file in SAS and we're going to name that index.sass. And now we're going to have to come over to our directory right here and we're going to have to import that. So we're going to do at import quotes and we're just going to write index. That's all we need right there for now. So over here in our index.sass, we're going to start building this section. So we have a header with the class of header dash main. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab that. Um, I'm just going to make a comment right here so we know this is our header. And then we're going to write header dot header dash main. And now we're going to give it um, position relative a Z index of one display of flex. Um, we're going to just justify. Um, now we're going to do flex direction um, column. We're going to align items center. And we're going to justify content center. And so what uh, these lines right here are going to do is basically it's going to do all the math um, for us. And it's going to keep um, 
this uh, directly in the center of um, that element. The reason this isn't going to float in the center is because we're going to actually force this to be down on the bottom here. And um, we'll worry about the nav a little later once we get to it. So on top of that, we're also going to give it a width of 100%. And now the height we've got is 500 pixels. So we're just going to go with height 500 pixels. And it does have a background image. So what we're going to do is we're going to say background. And instead of declaring the uh, path to the image here, um, we're actually going to declare the path to the image in the index.html um, using some inline styles. Don't hate me for that. Um, but it's the only way I can use um, Jekyll to just go ahead and grab that for me. So we're going to come over here and we're going to give it um, a size of cover, position, center, center, and we're going to say repeat no repeat okay and now to assign it an image we're going to go to the header and we're going to write style and we're going to go to the path of that image um, but we're going to write background image and it's going to be uh, URL um, parentheses and then quotation marks and you, we need to make sure um, not to use if we're using double quotes out here don't use double quotes inside so we're going to use curly brace curly brace site dot base URL just like before and that's going to be forward slash assets um, and then let's see where it is images and then forward slash whatever the name of our image is here so it's home-hero.jpg home-hero.jpg so let's come over to our browser refresh it see if it worked so as you can see right now we've got it stretching all the way across and I know for a fact that that is our image There is an error here. Um, assets, CSS, main, not found. Okay, so to fix this, we're going to come back over to our files over here. And inside of our assets and CSS, um, what happened was we wrote uh, .css, and we need this to be dot sass so that we can use the import now you see these turn gray instead of purple we're gonna save that again no errors come over here refresh now that's working much better this is how it's supposed to look right now so as you can see right now we've got this uh, border around the outside and that is um, some HTML um, styling that's already set by the browser so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to um, reset all of that so I'm gonna go to github and I'm going to go to my 
folder here and in my SAS and base, I have my own normalized SAS written out here. So I will add the links to these in the description. So I'm just going to come here and copy all of that. And we're going to come back over to <laughs> Adam. In our base, we are going to go ahead and add a new file and we're going to call it normalize.sass. Go ahead and go to our directory and say at import quotes and normalize. and then paste this in here, save it, make sure we don't have any errors, no errors. Let's come back to our site and just refresh it and see if these go away. So the border has gone away. So another thing that I'm going to go ahead and grab from here is going to be our reset. So this is just some CSS reset stuff that I have written to go ahead and just make sure things are how I want them to be. So we're gonna come back over here and go to base, new file. So we're gonna name it uh, reset.sass. Go back to our directory and we're going to add that file as well. So at import, and reset and then paste this in here and save it and we're probably going to get an error okay yeah we've got an error and it's um, undefined variable and that's fine because we're about to go ahead and define those so we're going to make one more file in our base and this is going to be called style.sass. So in our style.sass, we're going to add some of our own sass variables so we don't have to constantly add colors or uh, change colors every single place throughout the site. We'll be able to just keep using this variable and if we ever need to change uh, our primary color or a highlight color or anything like that, we can go ahead and just come right back here and just change it in one place and be good everywhere else. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to fonts.google.com and the two fonts we're going to be using is um, Rubik and Open Sans. So I'm going to type in Rubik. And we're going to select this font. And then we are also going to search for Open Sans. And we're going to go ahead and select this font as well. Let's uh, customize it. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab 300, 400, 600, 700, and 800 in Open Sans. I'm not grabbing the italics because I'm not planning on using any italics um, at this moment in time. And then in Rubik, we're just going to go ahead and grab the 300, 400, 500, 700 and 900 for now once we determine which ones we will will be using and won't be using we will just delete those versions from our SAS so um, our website loads quicker so we're going to come over here to embed and we're going to use an import and we're just going to go ahead and grab everything from that at symbol all the way up to before the semicolon copy that and we're going to go to or add them paste it in here and we can go ahead and save that for now we need to come back to our directory and we didn't add our style.sass yet so we're going to do at 
import style and that's that close out some of these windows here so the two variables that were undefined were uh, font stack and there was another font stack it was font stack 2 I don't see it though Yeah, so see, we're calling for font stack and font stack two, but neither of those have been set up yet. So we're gonna go ahead and create um, some SAS variables. So the first one we're gonna do is font stack. So it's gonna be dollar sign font stack, and then we're just going to go ahead and write this right quick. So this is one's gonna be Rubik, and then that's gonna be the one that the browser will try and load and then our fallbacks are going to be Arial and Sans Serif and then we're going to come down here and we're going to add font stack to font stack to and this is going to be open sans And then our fallbacks for this are going to be Arial and Sans Serif as well. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's see what happens here. All right, let's go ahead and try and quit the server real quick. So Control C. And let's try and start it up again and see if we get any issues. Okay, so the reason why this is still giving us an issue here is because even though we defined it here, we technically um, asked for it back here. And if we look at our directory, we'll see that we're including the part where we ask for it before we're including the part where we define it. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch these two. And now let's clear this and try and run it and start it up again one more time. All right, cool. So now everything's working again. We can close this out refresh that and you'll see this font has changed so that's good that's a step in the right direction um we're gonna go ahead and add some more variables in our style we're gonna go ahead and add uh, a white variable i like doing this because if there's ever a time where i need to change my white um, for whatever reason, I'd rather just have it in a variable just in case the situation ever occurs where I can, and I can just come back and change it in one place and just like everything else, have it changed throughout the entire site. So we're going to do the same thing with uh, black. And now we're going to go ahead and add our um, branding colors. So our primary color is one C one E two four the secondary color is nine E A three B four our highlight is going to be five one seven A F four. 
So what we are going to do while we're right here is we're going to um, change the color of our H1s and our H3s um, to be that primary color instead of black because if we look in our design right here, this is not black. It is our branding color. These are the three colors we just added right here. So we're going to come over here, back to Adam, and we're going to write H1, and we're going to say color, um, and then we're going to use the variable primary, so it's just going to be dollar sign primary, save it. See if we got any errors, no errors. Come back to the website, refresh the page. And I don't know if you can see that, but that is a little brighter. It's not quite black anymore. So we're gonna do the same with our H2. Our H3 and our H4 for now. I know I could add this all in one line right here, but um, we're going to be applying certain styles to certain ones of these, so I'm just going to leave it how it is for right now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do real quick is we're going to add our overlay. So we're going to grab that. Um, see, we named it overlay light. Whoops. And we're going to give it um, well, let's look at our design. So it is using white and it's at an opacity of 90%. So we're going to say um, background, we're going to use the variable white. And we're going to say opacity at 0.9 and that's going to be uh, the equivalent, equivalent of 90%. And we can come over here and you're not going to see anything change. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to position this absolute, give it a Z index of two. And we're going to set the top to zero, the right to zero, the bottom to zero, and the left to zero as well. Come over here and refresh it. And now you see the overlay is definitely working. So we're gonna have to go ahead and bring this text in front of that. So we put it in a wrapper called home-title. So we're gonna grab that right here, home title, and we're going to position it relative and let's just give it a z index of three save that come back over here refresh and now it's on front so if we come over here and look at the font size that we're we have this at it's at 50 pixels but we're going to write it in M's. So we're going to take um, 50 and divide it by 16. And so it's going to be 3.125 M's. So we're going to come over here and grab our H1 and say font size 3. 3.125 M. Let's see what our H3 is. 
it's 20 pixels, so you'll see 20 divided by 16 is 1.25. So our H3 over here is going to be font size 1.25 M. And let's go, let's refresh the page. You see the font size has changed. We're going to go ahead and we're going to align all the text center, but we're just going to apply it to the home uh, dash title div. So text align the center, save it. And you'll see everything aligns to the center and it trickles down. Um, if we look at, a des at our design, it's not quite in the center because we have some navigation up here. And this takes up 50 pixels. So what I did here is I'm pushing down the title um, just a little bit. Um, I'm just pushing it down 50 pixels, actually. So we're going to go ahead and add... Um, we're going to add a padding top of 50 pixels. Refresh it again, and you'll see that working right there. This isn't quite what the font weight's going to be. It's a little heavy. So for our H1, let's say font weight. Let's try 500 and let's say line height 1.2M. Refresh, see how that looks. It looks a bit better. Um, there's a little bit of distance between here, so we're going to add some padding to the H1. We're going to say padding 0. 20 pixels, 5 pixels, and then 20 pixels again. So if we resize this right now without refreshing, what's going to happen is it's going to run right up against the edge until it has to break. So when we refresh this, essentially what we did was we added no padding to the top five pixels of padding to the bottom and we added 20 pixels of padding on each side so now when we shrink this it will break before it gets right up against the edge for our h3 that's not going to be the uh, font weight that we're going to be using either so I want it to be a little thinner than the uh, head uh, header above it. So we're going to do font weight uh, 400. Let's give that a try. Save it. Refresh. I think that's looking a lot closer. I am also going to go ahead and add some line height of 1.2M as well. And save that. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, it's taken a little longer than expected, and I'm getting pretty tired. So if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. Um, give the video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.